Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. I thought it might be fun to do an investigative report on Anthony Palumbo. Now, a lot of people have brought this guy to my attention. Apparently, he's extremely elusive, very difficult to hone in on, but I would like to give it a try. I can say that I'm probably not going to find too much on him. I've already done a preliminary. He's very tough to search for. There's a lot of people with the same name. There's an attorney. There is someone with a state. This is going to be a very difficult search, but I'd like to give it a shot. So right now I have open justnotepad.com where we can take some notes. I have opened the To Catch a Predator wiki and also where he appeared here on To Catch a Predator. And we're gonna be going through this and looking for details and going through this page and grabbing some details as well. So let's just jump right on in. So I'm going to take this link here for the wiki and put it into notepad. The alias, which obviously he's probably not using now, but we're gonna put that in. And what else do we have here? Affiliation slash occupation, unemployed, Atlantic City, gambler, uh, caring for his ill and mother. Okay, so nothing really too telling there. We have male, five, nine, eye color, brown, hair color, black. Let's put that in here as well. All right, now let's see here. We have Anthony Palumbo is 46 years old at the time of the sting. So we have a possible date of birth of 1961. It says birthday unknown. Place of birth, I don't know if that's accurate or not because he said he was coming from, I believe, Staten Island and going to Atlantic City. So I'm not going to include that in, but I did hear that he's 46 years old. So let's go ahead and put in approximate age at time of sting okay so let's see what else do we have here okay so we have this here where he mentions his other brother or older brother i'm not sure what that's supposed to say he was on his way to atlantic city so let's put that in has a brother what else do we have here so behind the scenes slash trivia it says at the age of 35 prior to the catch part of sting he was hospitalized for burns sustained from having boiling soup poured on his head by his father. I don't know if they're just messing around with this or if this is truth, but let's put it in there just the same and it might be of use later when we're searching him. Okay, so this might be the chat log. Let's open that up and see what that shows. Let's see if we see anything of interest. Okay, now hi buddy, what's up is Anthony Palumbo and Outer Space Boy 93 is the decoy. Okay, so hi buddy, what's up says his name is Chris, and we know that's not true, but sometimes they use names that are familiar to them, so we'll put in alias Chris. Okay, so right here he says that he was using AOL, so he might have an AOL email address, or previously had. I know people that still have their AOL email. Okay, he says he's not using Google, so no Google account, at least at the time. Okay, right here, March 30th, 2007, the decoy says that I was looking for someone to talk to and I know Staden ain't that far away. Hi buddy, what's up? Anthony Palumbo does not correct him, so that gives a little more credence to him actually being in Staten Island or living in Staten Island. Okay, so right here we have the decoy giving Anthony Palumbo directions, so I'm wondering if the decoy does know where he lives or pretty close to where he lives. So let's take a look at some of these addresses and see where they are. We'll start with Dorville Place. And I'm going to put it in Staten Island because that's where we think he is. Okay, so Dorville Place is in Staten Island. So that's something right there. I'm gonna put that in the notes. Let's take a look at one of the other addresses here. Annadale Road, Let's see where that is, if that's in Staten Island. Okay, Annadale Road is in Staten Island. So I think it's pretty telling that he does live in Staten Island like he said he did. This is a pretty unique name, Drumgool Road West. Okay, that's also in Staten Island. So I think it's pretty safe to say by the directions that are being given to Palumbo that he does live in Staten Island. Okay, so the last piece here is this vehicle that Anthony Palumbo says, 1999 Avalon Toyota Black with tinted windows. So the decoy asks what to watch out for and Palumbo says that this is his vehicle. So let's put this in. That could be pretty helpful if we find a lead there. All right, so I think that's all the details we're gonna get here. Let's jump over to the video and see what information we can gain there. 
Okay, so here we are on the video to catch a predator, and this is on the official to catch a predator TV channel. And just to avoid any copyright issues, I'm only going to play parts of this where he does give details. I'll be watching it, but in this video, you'll only see parts. All right, so let's listen to this and see what information we can gain. Three-year-old Anthony Palumbo, and he's brought a gift. We've hired an 18-year-old actor to play the part of the young teen. Okay, so right here in this part, he's handing off the alcohol to the decoy. And he says to the decoy, well, you can listen. Your good directions. So he's complimenting the decoy on the directions that was given to him, meaning that what we put in the notes here with these different addresses is probably accurate. And again, giving credence to the fact that he lives in or has lived in Staten Island at the time. Online in an AOL gay chat room calling himself. There's that AOL right there, the AOL chat room. Uh, shows that he has an AOL account and he previously said that he wasn't on Google or anything like that so he does have that AOL email. Let's see if we put that in there. Yep, AOL previous email, so that's there. Okay, so this part right here is where he gives the excuse that he went to Atlantic City. I know this too. <laughs> My excuse to come here, I went to Atlantic City. I just, I don't know what to Okay, let's continue. Okay, so this part right here is when he talks about giving the cover story and his brother. So why'd you need the cover story to go to uh, Atlantic City? I'll uh, see my brother. Yeah. yeah, but who did you have to give that to as a cover story? No, I mean, my brother is home, my other brother. Right. And I said, I gotta go to Atlantic City. And, but instead you came here. So he talks about going to Atlantic City to see his brother. That's the first thing he says. And then he says, my other brother is home so probably has a brother at home Staten Island and might have a brother in Atlantic City New Jersey that could be complete BS we don't know but I think he probably does have a brother at home let's continue okay I love this part where he doesn't know his age how old are you 39 39. Has to think about it. You said you were 35 online. 35. 39. Yeah. We find out later he's actually 46. He said. Okay, so we do have that here where he is 46 at the time of the sting. He's unemployed and spends his time caring for his ailing mother. Then he tries to explain away his graphic sexual chat. So coming up, we do have some details in the end credits. I don't know where these details come from, but we'll try to explore that. Okay, so it says that he was arrested as part of the Ocean County, New Jersey sting in March 2007. Let's put that in. See what else we have here. Okay, so it says he was convicted on a charge of criminal attempt and sentenced to a lifetime of parole supervision and registration as a sex offender. So let's put that in. Okay, so that appears to be everything there. Let's see what we can do to find him with the details that we do have. Okay, so we're back, and what we're going to do now is look at the municipal court case search for the state of New Jersey. We know that this was in Ocean County, New Jersey, March 2007 sting, so the arrest and the charge is probably going to be in 2007. Sometimes things are delayed, but it's probably going to be then. I do want to point out a quick shout out and thank you to Joey's TCAP channel over here. I'll link that in the description. He was nice enough to give me the lead to New Jersey courts and it actually wasn't a lead here. It was to, I believe, a sheriff's log that gave me a date of birth, which by the way was slightly off, not his fault at all, but that was just what was on record. Now also a quick shout out to Blue Falcons Investigations out of North Carolina. Uh, the owner's a good friend of mine. I'll put his image up here and link that in the description. He was nice enough to take his time and go through the potential dates of birth and look for the correct one that matched up with the name in this court search. And that's time consuming, it's tedious, and he took the time to do that. So big shout out to him for putting the time in there. Now, without further ado, I'll jump into this search and show you exactly what I found. All right, so we're gonna do a search by name and I'm gonna put in the name Anthony Palumbo. Okay, and we did find that the date of birth is August 6th, 1960. And again, this was one of those very tedious searches 
where he basically worked with the date of birth and went up a couple months and then went down a couple months or he maybe started i hope he went up and started there first because that way it wouldn't have taken forever but finally found the date of birth match to the name and we'll put in the captcha unfortunately not all of investigative work is glamorous we don't do a few google searches and find the hit and then that leads us to everything else a lot of it is very very tedious sometimes okay so here we go this is the summary right here where we have the prefix w we have the year 2007 the number 32 court 1519 defendant anthony palumbo state disposed it shows the court is 1519 manto loking municipal court i probably have that pronunciation wrong the offense is 2c 5-1a1 and it says the offense description criminal attempt purposely engages in conduct and that's all we get to see here okay so we have definitely a little bit more information here not much more on the defendant unfortunately but we have the complaint information and transferred to prosecutor reason indictable disposed transferred let's see uh bill was set so we might be able to get more information off that later agency and officer id offense date 331 2007 8 25 p.m i'm going to oh and you know i totally forgot let me take this and put this into the notes here and we have the name anthony palumbo and we have uh, no other information on the defendant but we have the offense date and time 331 2007 and 8 25 p.m criminal attempt purposely engages in conduct and there's actually two charges right here oh and here's more information sex assault uh victim 13 to 16 so that's a lot more than it showed on the initial screen so let's take that information and put it in as well and we have some information here let's click on bail okay so bail was set at fifty thousand dollars okay so that appears to be all the good information oh let me click on this one here luring enticing a child so this was the other charge right here okay so i think that's the only information that we have that's good for the defendant not that much but at least we have the dates of the different actions here okay so here we are on the new jersey courts public access criminal case search let's go over to the results i did a name search for anthony palumbo and it was a new window but i dragged it over here so we can see it and we have it doesn't let you search by much if you have the middle initial you can put in that but this was the results i got on anthony palumbo why it came up with these other names here i'm not sure but this is the only one that doesn't have a middle initial and it has that date of birth of 1960 that we have already verified so let me take this information here first let me take this and put this in the notes and i'll say we did a criminal new jersey criminal case search i'll put the link in there and then i'll click on this and see what information it gives me okay so we have some information here this is alias name oh this is his hi buddy what's up thing <laughs> that's great that's awesome that it's in there as an alias uh city staten island we have the zip 10312 uh let's see here birthplace staten island new york birth year 1960 language is blank male height six foot weight 190 hair black eyes brown we have an fbi number here and an sbi number so let's just take this information and put this all right into the notes i wonder if i click on case list or alias list okay so here is on alias list it shows just what we already know so what about the okay so i think this shows pretty much what we already have we have the birth year confirmed and yeah we have this information from the previous court case search that we did okay so now i'm going to click this because it looks like there might be even more information to this okay so now we have a whole new screen here and let's see what information we can get off this we now know that the attorney is michael chazen or chazen i'm not sure how to pronounce that spent two years in jail or yeah no two days in jail it looks like and sentence length zero so he basically didn't get sentenced or didn't go to jail it says sentence date 12 5 2008 disposition 7 2 2008 he only spent two days in jail so he must have bailed out all right so let's see these other tabs all right i was hoping there would be more information here 
there's a $50,000 bail, it says, and again, I'm not going to know what all this information is, but bail posted date, April 1st, 2007. All right, and let's see here if there's anything in bail forfeiture. I feel like this could be set up a little better. Bail history. Let's continue. Let's do sentence. Some of this information we already have, some of it we do not have. Let's continue and see what else we can find. Prior fees, additional fees. Let's go back to the original, uh-oh, that's not good. Okay, we're back, problem is fixed. Where were we? Okay, and then we can click for more information. We have the indictment and the complaint. Let's hope there's some better information here. Indictment. Okay, so this is a little more information. We have the, still the same information on the defendant, Anthony Palumbo. We have the charge count, criminal attempt. We have the auxiliary statute, which is sexual assault victim, 13 to 15 years old, actor, four plus years, endangering the welfare of a child. That might have been with the alcohol too, or just him in person endangering the welfare of the child. Okay, how about the complaint? New Jersey isn't giving us a lot of information on the defendant. Okay, I'm not seeing any other information here. It's interesting how the auxiliary statute just suddenly changes with the victim age, but uh, this one, the first one, the primary statute remains the same. So what about ACS inquiry? I'm not sure what that is. Nope, really nothing new there. Let's see if there's anything else. I'm very disappointed with this. I, I mean, there's a lot of good information here that we didn't have, but on the defendant himself, on Anthony Palumbo, I'm just not seeing any good telling information. No arrest information found on this defendant. Thanks. PTI? Okay, still really nothing of use there. So I'm going to clean up the notes a little bit and we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so here we are on a news source, silive.com, and this shows two island suspects nabbed in Dateline Sting. Now, this was posted April 9th, 2007. It says it was updated March 21st, 2019, but the original posting date was back in April of 2007, and that would have been right after this incident happened. So we have some pretty useful information here. I'm not gonna read the whole thing, but it shows, let's put the link in the notes. And I'm also gonna put, well, it's in here that it was April 2007. So it shows Anthony Palumbo, 46 of Shotwell Ave in Annadale. So let's go ahead and put that in. And then we can commence with a search with that information that we gained right there. Okay, so I just Googled Anthony Palumbo, Shotwell Ave, and clearly you can see I clicked on some of the links, but there's a neighbor report and there's this site on number and it shows Tony R. Palumbo, 41 Shotwell Ave. Now we know that his name is Anthony Palumbo and we know that he's on Shotwell Ave now. So let's open up a few of these links here. Okay, and you can actually see one of the confusing things I ran into in the past was that lawyer, Staten Island, New York, attorneys and law firms, this is this link right here, office of Anthony Palumbo. So there's an office right in Staten Island law office of Anthony Palumbo, and that is absolutely not our subject that we're looking for. So there's just a few of them in the area and you have to be really, really careful. And that's why we go through all these steps so we can be really careful making sure that we have the right individual. Okay, so on the first link here, this is number, but N-U-W-B-E-R.com. And this shows Tony R. Palumbo, 61 years old, Staten Island, New York. And you gotta take the information that's on these websites with a grain of salt, but we have a mobile number. As I say in all my videos, I would urge you not to call these numbers. The purpose of this video is not to incite anyone to harass. And I would strongly recommend that you don't call them, actually. This is just for information purposes. So what else do we have here? We have relatives, Richard C. Palumbo. We have an Anthony Palumbo. So if that is someone else with the same name, that would square with his statement that he gave the excuse to his brother, and maybe his brother is one of these individuals, or both of these individuals. We have some possible email addresses as well. We'll take that and put it in the notes. And this is completely free. I'm not logged into anything right now. We have personal information, August 6, 1960. That would jive with what we found when we did the search in New Jersey County records. So here's the relatives, and these are roughly the same age 
ranges. So I'm assuming that is his brother. We have the address right here, 41 Shotwell Ave in Staten Island, New York. And I'm kind of curious that if we looked at, I guess we don't know where the decoy was, the specific house. We That might have been in the records, I don't recall for sure, but we have generally where the decoy was in that house, and then we have his address. So I wonder if we did a map quest or we checked the directions if we would see those streets that he gave. I think the decoy said in the chat log that he was doing a map quest. So I wonder if that would match up with the directions from 41 Shotwell Ave. Okay, so look at this. We have the turn right onto Drumgool Road right there. And that was one of the addresses. That's something. And I think that uh, shows that he probably is at that address, 41 Shotwell. Let's take a look at another search. Okay, so here we are on True People Search. I'm just going to put that into the notes. Okay, so we have 10 different records here. We have Lena Palumbo, that could obviously be a relative. We have this person, Anthony Palumbo at 61 years old. So let me open this in a new tab. Richard Palumbo, that could very well be the brother. We'll look at that one as well. Maria Palumbo, age 94. Let's take a look at a few of these. We have Anthony R. Palumbo, and that's actually the August 1960. That is the date of birth that we have, so that works out. We have a current address right here, 17 Berry Ave. Although we did have that shot well thing, so let's see here. Yep, that shows a previous address, but we have it as a new address. So I'm gonna assume he's still there. We have these email addresses. I'm not really gonna look at the relative as much, but we do have a decent amount of information here. So let me take a look at the numbers. Okay, so I ran through all the numbers and I didn't find anything directly to the subject, Anthony Palumbo, or specifically any businesses he might run. I did find some references to relatives. I found some light references to him. I found a reference to a business that probably has nothing to do with him at all. It's not the address, it's not the name, so not on the relative or associate list. So there wasn't really much found, but we do have a potential address. We have another potential address right here. We have a full date of birth that's confirmed. We have, and that's confirmed right down to the criminal record. We have some possible email addresses, relatives, some possible numbers. We have uh, a bunch of case information right here. We have possibly what he's driving and sentencing information and much more. So this is a great place, I think, to end this video. I know this is only basic, but we did gain a fairly decent amount of information. I did this again with the help of Joey's TCAP channel and with the help of Blue Falcon's investigation in North Carolina. So I thank both of you for your help. And there will probably be another video. I can actually tell you there will definitely be another video on Anthony Palumbo. So just stay tuned for that. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. And what I'm going to do in the meantime is issue a ton of FOIA requests. And we'll see what we can get for another video. I hope everyone has a great rest of the day.